but to be told it this way, it was basically a social gathering. And mm-hmm. then also, let's talk about some weird stuff yeah. for funsies. He decided not to go because he was still trying to take care of his wife. So all of his brothers and some of the cousins had taken the journey. By the next morning, Bridget seemed to be doing a little bit better, but they couldn't tell one way or the other whether or not she was okay. She just seemed a bit better, and she was more coherent than she was before, you know, before they tortured her. Simpson also recounts that she said, quote, what what has the place there, and why was the kitchen filled with smoke? She was clearly hallucinating because they weren't there. And when, several days later, when Bridget seemed to be on the mend, they brought her to the table after administering another herbal treatment. And at that time, she was asked to eat some bread. Because let's get something in your stomach you haven't really eaten. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. My parents did that to me when I was younger. I do that now when I'm sick. These things are things. And he asked her to eat three bites of the bread with the jelly. And she only had eaten two, which apparently is a problem. When she asked to have her tea in between the jam and bread, he had told her that she had to eat the third bit before he would give her tea. When she refused to eat the third bit, he knocked her out of her chair and onto the floor. Uh From there, he tried to open her mouth manually and had grabbed a hot piece of log out of the fire. Yeah. And was basically telling her that if she didn't eat up, he would force the hot poker down her throat. Yeah. Now, when they look at the autopsy later, it's said that she has a laceration on the side of her tongue and on the side of her lip. And that it seems like there is a discoloration around her neck, but, quote, not that much damage. Now, the explanation I have later does not seem like that much, like not that much damage. When she was on the floor, she called up for help from Johanna, just like before no one was intervening. Again, the whole family was around. Michael had torn off her clothes and left her lay upon the floor and continued to threaten her with the red hot log from the fire. Some of the people had gone to one of the other rooms and they heard her hit the kitchen floor, which, by the way, was just packed dirt. They heard her scream. She had been picked up and, while she was being threatened still with the log, Mm -hmm. was held near the fire, which accidentally set her chemise on fire. Michael had lifted her limp body from the floor when he thought she was dead, and then had continued by throwing paraffin oil on her body from a lantern that was in the house, which he denies later, but there's a lot of people that say that that happened, and there's also paraffin oil residue on the hilt of the shovel that was used to bury her later. But when they did the autopsy, were they not able to tell whether or not there was, like, an accelerant on her skin? Yep. Okay. He had locked everyone inside of the house, and while her body was currently burning on the floor, he refused to give up the key. He had stated, she's an old deceiver sent in place of my wife. She's after deceiving me for the last seven or eight days and deceived the priest today, too. But she won't deceive anyone anymore. As I began it with her... I will finish with her. You'll soon see her go up the chimney. Anyone that tried to approach him to open the house because they were worried about burning alive instead of the cottage. And also, you know, let's go get some help. Yeah, which is a thing. Yeah. Both of those things. He would threaten with a knife in his hand. It was a black-handled knife. The same knife that he had said that he was going to go to acquire her from the fairy fort. Apparently, the oil was thrown over her at least three separate times. And although they thought she was dead, she was more likely than not unconscious. I mean, not to be a terrible person, but at least she wasn't completely conscious when things were happening that would kill her. After she was put out, he had rolled her into an old bag in a sheet and left her in the middle of the floor while the other family members were trying to get out of the house. He had threatened her father specifically because he thought he may have an association with the Fae as well. He thought that Johanna had altered motives and that she was super jealous as she had oftentimes tried to get the local authorities to arrest him for supposed murder schemes against her. He continued to maintain that he was going to get her free from the Fae. Eventually, when he realized what had happened, he said, quote, Oh God, Hannah, this is the substance of poor B's body, which will, unfortunately, when he was walking to the chapel, he had a lot of greasy residue on him. And a lot of it is believed to be the fat from Bridget's burning body and from when he had buried her. This is where you're not going to feel super duper. I'm several drinks in, so hit me with it. I can't feel anything at this point. Right. Um, (laughs) Okay. So at the trial... A friend of theirs had found him and Dunn walking towards the chapel the day after Bridget disappeared, and he seemed to be a wreck. Apparently, he collapsed on the altar and looked sort of a, quote, madman. And he confessed 
to something terrible happening to what he kept saying was a changeling and that he was trying to get too many people to go up to the fairy fort and acquire his wife, who at the time he believed was going to be on a gray or white horse and tethered to it by some ropes, which is why he was carrying the blade with them. He went there for three days and pretty much gave up hope when everyone else didn't see anything happening. And obviously his wife wasn't there. No, because you done fucking killed her. Right. You big stupid bitch. He's a lot of things. He, during this time, had also gone through a lot of physical stress. The last weight I have on him is about 179 pounds. And at this point in time, for his frame, he was 154 pounds upon his arrest a few days afterwards. The jury was spared a lot of the gross details because it was thought to be unnecessary for them to hear every detail in order to make their decision. After Bridget's body was found, 11 people were arrested, including Johanna. It was explained to her what would happen to her children if she were to be arrested, and she flipped against her family to offer Queen's evidence in the trial. She was caught in a lie where she said that she saw Bridget leave the house in a nightgown and she wasn't able to prevent her from doing so on the last day that she was seen alive. They find out later that she was present for any and all of the situations that were happening at the house, including when she was set aflame. Her body was found in a boggy, muddy, and puddle, mostly filled with water. It's about 18 inches below the surface of the ground. Okay. They did an autopsy. Ganey's, the fairy doctor's herbs that were prescribed was found to have no effect on the body and was not responsible for her death. Her death was determined to have been caused by burning. Okay. The jury was brought to the body after the autopsy. Quote, it was wrapped in the sheet in which it was when it was discovered and presented a most ghastly appearance. The back and the lower part of the body were severely burned. The bones and intestines protruding. Oh, that's horrifying. The head and the face were apparently uninjured. I read somewhere that there was a bag, like a linen bag that was placed over. I'm not sure how... Over her head? Yes. I'm not sure exactly how true that is, but that would make sense if that's why her features aren't damaged. Do you think... Obviously, there's no real explanation or answer to this, but like it's just an interesting thought. Do you feel like maybe that's because somebody didn't want to look at her face? That she would have had a bag? Maybe it was just too hard to look at her? Yeah, but they would know that it would preserve the features. She wasn't found with the bag on her head or well in accordance to one thing it said that she was it's not a constant thing and i didn't read it in the wait book, so it, wait so where does the bag come in i'm confused i read it in one article oh so it, the bag wasn't a thing okay yeah but i'm not sure how how truthful it is because like i said i didn't read it in the book and i've only read it i think in one okay. of the articles i read okay this is where your i hope she was still unconscious if not dead mm-hmm. comes into play yeah quote the features were those of a young woman and were much distorted indicating the terrible sufferings in which the poor creature endured what I'm reading from that is that she fully was alive and he was ignoring it. Of the 11 that were arrested, nine of them actually went to court. They were charged on the 21st of March with having something to do with her death. That charge was abandoned and it said that they, quote, jointly and severely and with malice afterthought, feloniously killed and murdered Bridget Cleary. The man who had given the herbs was charged with, with accessory. Johanna obviously had lied because she's a bitch. Oh, also, this is the thing about Johanna. When she was in the court, she's giving evidence and she's gained immunity because she struck a deal for her kids. Cool, I guess. But she spent the entire time holding one of her babies to what I can only see is elicit sympathy from the jury so that she wasn't somehow got into this, even though she's pretty much a big player in this. They, while in court, had brought out the shovel that was stained with the oil. There was a trace of the soil where Bridget was buried. Michael had an outburst during Johanna's testimony and said that she was lying. She pretty much had stated that Michael was mad that Bridget had paid Johanna for the fresh milk to aid her treatment. Days before, Michael had told Dunn that he may kill himself, but didn't say why or for what reason. Mm -hmm. At the end of the trial, it took the jury about 45 minutes to return a verdict. One of the younger people was discharged. He's the one that was holding the candle, took no part in anything except for standing idly by the side, which really sucks. Dunn and some of the Kennedys, which were her cousins, were found guilty of wounding Mary Kennedy, the aunt, was found guilty, and so was Michael. I'm so sorry. Um, But there was recommended mercy because they were in older years. One of her other cousins got five years for actively taking part. 
done the person who just gave the herbs. No, I'm sorry. Done the person who had suggested the herbs had gotten three years. By the time that he was out, his wife had died and he didn't have a place to live. And he continued to work as a laborer into his late 70s. Wow. Okay. All right. Two of the other Kennedys, the ones that held her arms down, had gotten one year apiece. Her father, Patrick, had gotten six months. Mostly because he was an old man and they didn't find any actual use in having him be there. Also, it is said later that he would have done anything to help her out. And at this point in time, it had spiraled so far out of control, he didn't know what to do. Yeah. Another one of the Kennedys had gotten six months. He really didn't participate. Mary, who was there, but... He didn't participate and he got six months? Yeah. Mary, who was there, but didn't participate at all, aside from to try to get out of the house when Michael lost his mind, was discharged mostly because she was an older woman. Cleary had gotten 20 years for manslaughter, but the judge had been ex expressly obvious that he wanted him to go to jail for murder. He said in court that what he was planning for was weighing whether or not he should answer such a terrible act with murdering him, and he decided against it, and probably the best course of action was to charge him for manslaughter. Um, Are you for real? Yep. I'd say that was pretty deliberate what happened. Well, okay. that's another thing, too, is what you touched on earlier, where you're saying that she was making the money. She seemed to be in charge of the finances. There's actually a pretty long ordeal about her giving Johanna this container with a $20 note in it, which at the time was crazy sauce. So much to put inside of this trunk in the house. And he flipped out a little bit about her having handle on the money. So even when Bridget was super sick, she was like, this is here for just in case. Okay, well, you know what? You don't get to control all the motherfucking money, mm -hmm. especially when she's the one making it. So guess what, home skillet? Well, they were both making money. Okay, they were both making money, but you don't get to control everything that she does with it. Right. Okay, you don't get to tell her what to do with all the monsicles. So if she wants to give her cousin Joha a $20 note, then chill your boner, home skillet. Apparently, Johanna had made an allusion to her having made a statement that he had been trying to burn her alive for several months well prior to her mm -hmm. sickness. Yeah. Which has become a convenient way for some people to feel about whether or not there was this sort of psychotic break and him believing that there's some sort of paranormal aspect to her death or if he just found it convenient to make what people have called a, quote, fairy defense. Mm -hmm. He, even when he was in prison, had maintained that he was intentionally trying to free her from the Fae. The ashes pulled from the fireplace were buried in the manure heap, and Johanna, when she was passing one day, had recollected that he had pulled the earring that she was wearing the night that she was in the fire out of the heap and then told her explicitly to not return so that it didn't look suspicious. Saddest thought about all of this, besides the torture, her funeral after they exhumed her body from the very shallow grave that she was in was boycotted by her family and friends and most people in the village. She was placed besides her mother. There was an assertion that a leg was longer than the other and not one person in the town defended her, not during the torture, not during her burning, and not afterwards either. That sucks. It's not, not great. It's like what I skipped over, which I was like, man, it's not really important, is that he thought that he had regained his wife and he had a pastor do mass at the house. The same pastor who called her irritable and hysterical. Yeah, the, the drunk one. No, he wasn't drunk. That was Oh, no, I'm thinking the doctor. Yeah. My bad. Yeah. Is he the one that she threw the potato water on? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good for her. Yeah. <laughs> he had been called for mass and supposedly she had spat out the communion that he had given her to bless her insides. I have a quote on that, but it's really not important. I just wrote it down because it's not important. <laughs> that sounds so dirty. <laughs> bless my insides. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm not wrong. <laughs> Last sad statement, when reporters had gone to the house to view all of the damage and basically to gawk at what was happening, her dog and her cat were still there. Obviously, Michael was in prison and no one was really taking care of the animals. Their neighbor had been basically taking over the duties of taking care of that area. And when he was speaking to one of the reporters, he had said that the dog walks up and down looking for her, especially if there's a female that's approaching the path towards the house where Bridget would normally walk when she was going to town for any reason that the dog waits for her and gets really excited and runs out to the female and then when it notices that it's not Bridget goes skulking away looking for her okay so dog behavior yeah 
Yeah. That is sad. That is very sad. I was just saying it's real sad, though. That's fucked up. But, uh, but that was real good. I mean, it was really terrible, but it was really good. <laughs> so are you ready to tell me about some ghosts? Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Girl, I'm ready. <laughs> so, I think think that we talked about this place a little 